The Bible is filled with intricate patterns hidden within the passages of Scripture that reveal the hand of God at work throughout history. From the cycles of captivity and the rest for the land in Israel's history to the prophetic significance of the Jubilee years, these patterns point to a divine design orchestrated by the God of Israel. They are not random events, but deliberate milestones, each marking a crucial phase in the unfolding of God's redemptive plan for his people. This work seeks to explore a profound discovery, how Israel's 111 years of captivity and 200 years of rest for the land during the time of the judges provide the foundation for a broader understanding of biblical chronology. By applying the principles found in Leviticus chapter 26, where God warns that Israel would be punished seven times for their sins, we uncover a deeper meaning behind the numbers 777, 666, and 555 and their connection to Israel's servitude and God's timeline of redemption for his people. From the 70 weeks prophecy of Daniel 9, which foretells periods of captivity, to the fateful year of 1452 AD when the papal bull Dum de Versus was issued, beginning the transatlantic slave trade, this study examines how these events fit within a precise divine timeline that leads us through the 413 years of captivity and the liberation of the enslaved in 1865, which points us towards the Jubilee year 5536 AM, a significant Jubilee year in God's unfolding plan. What are the chances that these events, calculated so precisely, are mere coincidence? Or do they point to the unmistakable fingerprints of God through this exploration of the numbers, biblical prophecy, and historical events, we will examine the possibility that these moments in history are not accidental, but divinely orchestrated. As we journey through the patterns of Jubilee cycles and prophetic timelines, I invite you to discover the beauty and precision of God's eternal calendar, where every event has its appointed time, and history itself bears witness to his sovereign control over the course of human affairs and the lives of his people, the descendants of Israel. This is a work not just of numbers, but of faith, an invitation to see history, prophecy, and time through the eyes of the Creator's Jubilee framework, whose plan is revealed in every detail. The proof is in the math. Welcome to the divine design. Deuteronomy 31 to 10 from the King James Version, KJV. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee and from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed and thou shalt possess it and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart 
and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord, and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. This passage speaks of God's promise to restore Israel from captivity and bless them if they return to him with all their heart and soul, obeying his commandments. Here is a breakdown of how many years Israel served in captivity and how many years the land rested during the error of the judges. Mesopotamian Oppression Judges 3, 8 to 11. Years in captivity, 8 years. Judges 3, 8. Therefore the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Chushan Rishathim, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served Chushan Rishathim 8 years. Years of rest, 40 years. Judges 3, 11. And the land had rest 40 years. Moabite oppression. Judges 3, 12 to 30. Years in captivity, 18 years. Judges 3, 14. So the children of Israel served Eglon the king of Moab 18 years. Years of rest, 80 years, Judges 3.30. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest fourscore years. Canaanite oppression, Judges 4, 1 of 5, 31. Years in captivity, 20 years, Judges 4.3. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. Years of rest, 40 years, Judges 5.31. So let all thine enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. And the land had rest 40 years. Midianite oppression, Judges 6.1.28. Years in captivity, 7 years, Judges 6.1. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. Years of rest, 40 years, Judges 8, 28. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted up their heads no more, and the country was in quietness 40 years in the days of Gideon. Philistine and Ammonite oppression, Judges 10, 6 to 12, verse 7. Years in captivity, 18 years, Judges 10, 8. And that year they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel, 18 years, all the children of Israel that were on the other side Jordan, in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. Years of rest. No specific rest period is mentioned after this oppression in the text. Philistine oppression. Judges 13, 1 to 16, 31. Years in captivity, 40 years. Judges 13, 1. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. Years of rest. No specific rest period is mentioned after Samson's deliverance in the text. Through each of these cycles of captivity, there is one constant. Every time Israel turned back to God, he delivered them. Whether they were oppressed for seven years or forty years, God always raised up a deliverer, and the land found rest. This is a reminder for all of us today, no matter how long we've been in a season of hardship or oppression, God's deliverance is certain when we turn our hearts back to Him. It's important to remember that after every period of struggle, there is a season of peace and restoration. Just as the land rested for 40 years or 80 years, God is faithful to provide times of refreshing after we endure hardship. So if you're going through a difficult season right now, take heart. Your time of rest is coming, and God's deliverance is always closer than you think. Stay encouraged, and keep trusting in the God of Israel, who always brings his people out of captivity and into freedom. 
According to the book of Judges, Israel experienced 111 years of captivity and 200 years of rest for the land after being delivered or saved by the judges. This pattern of servitude and rest highlights the cyclical nature of Israel's history during the time of the judges, where periods of peace were repeatedly followed by oppression due to their turning away from the God of Israel. Together, 111 years and 200 years represent 311 years, both servitude and rest for the land, creating the initial foundation for this calculation. In Leviticus chapter 26, God warns Israel that if they fail to obey his commandments, he will punish them seven times for their sin. Using this seven times for your sins premise in Leviticus chapter 26, we are going to multiply the number of years of captivity of Israel during the era of the judges by seven. 111 years times seven equals 777 years of punishment. We're going to subtract the years already served in captivity. 777 minus 111 gives us 666 years left to serve. For the land, we are going to subtract 200 years from 777, subtracting 200 years already rested from 777 gives us 555 years remaining. These calculations of 666 years left to serve and 555 years left for the land to rest highlight symbolic biblical numbers. 666 often associated with evil or judgment and 555 often connected to divine grace and favor. Now let's talk about the 70 weeks prophecy in Daniel 9. The 70 weeks prophecy in Daniel 9 describes a period of 490 years of captivity. 490 years minus 70 of those years of Babylonian captivity gives us 420 years left to be fulfilled. Subtracting another 7 years believed to be reserved for the end times or last days prophecy leaves us with 413 years yet to be fulfilled. And now the connection to the transatlantic slave trade from 1452 to 1865 is 413 years. The papal bull dumb diversa signed by Pope Nicholas V on June 18, 1452 authorized the enslavement of non-Christians, most likely Israelites, marking the beginning of the transatlantic slave trade. Many Israelites who fled Roman persecution settled in West Africa, Portugal, Morocco, and other nearby areas and were affected by the enslavement. From 1452 A.D. to 1865 A.D., there are exactly 413 years, a precise match with the unfulfilled years of captivity left according to the earlier calculation. In 1865, the final group of enslaved people in in Galveston, Texas, was informed of their freedom on June 19th, now celebrated as Juneteenth, fulfilling the prophetic 413 years of servitude. Connecting 1865 to 2025 and 1452 to 1865. From 1865 to 2025 on modern time, there are 160 years. From 1452 A.D. to 1865, there are 413 years. Adding these years together gives us 573 years. This leaves a difference of 93 years to reach the original calculation of 666 years. From Leviticus 26 pattern of seven times for your sins. Adding these 93 years to 2025 brings us to the A.D. year 2118 which I have identified as the Jubilee year 5536 AM, according to the Jubilee system of timekeeping. I have calculated that 5536 AM represents the 36th year, of the 111th Jubilee cycle, which is very significant. This is highly significant because the number of 111 matches the exact number of years of Israel's captivity in the book of Judges. 
Additionally, I have calculated that 5536 AM is exactly 2,600 years from the Jubilee year 2936 AM, which is the end of the first year of King Solomon's reign. 21 AD, which is the Jubilee year 5539, three years later, this is also 2,600 years after Solomon began construction on the first temple, and is also 3,080 years from the year of the Exodus, which took place in the Jubilee year 2459 AM. I call these fingerprints of the God of Israel on his timeline. Let's analyze the patterns here. Let's analyze whether these numbers reveal divine patterns of fingerprints of God, or rather they could be coincidental. Symbolic numbers, the use of 111, 666, 555, and we got 777. 111 is tied to Israel's servitude during the time of the judges. 666 has long been associated with judgment, notably in Revelation the number of the beast. And 555 is often seen as a number associated with grace and favor. These numbers seem too specific to be coincidental, suggesting divine orchestration. Now let's look at the prophetic fulfillment. The 70-week prophecy and the division of 490 years into phases with 70 years served in Babylon and 413 years fulfilled from 1452 to 1865 seem to align perfectly with historical events, particularly the end of slavery in the land of the North. This alignment is further emphasized by the fulfillment of Juneteenth in 1865, exactly 413 years to the day after 1452 Dum de This historical precision points to a divine timing rather than random coincidence. The Jubilee Patterns. The Jubilee Patterns, the calculations surrounding the Jubilee Cycles and the year 2939 AM, which is Solomon's, uh, the end of Solomon's first year uh, as king, and 5536 AM show intricate connection between biblical history and historical biblical chronology. The connection of 2,600 years from King Solomon's reign to 5536 AM and The 3,080 years from the Exodus in 2459 to the same period further support a divine design as these cycles correspond to pivotal events in Israel's history. The statistical likelihood, the chances of these numbers coinciding purely by chance are astronomically low. The alignment of these events with such precision suggests a divine plan. The probability of this alignment happening accidentally would likely be less than 1%. Given the specificity of dates, years, and reoccurrences of significant biblical numbers, mathematically, if we assume independent probabilities for each of these alignments, the matching of 413 years, the connection of Jubilee cycles, and the symbolic use of 666, 555, 777, 111, the overall probability of this happening by chance would decrease dramatically. Based on the analysis, it appears highly unlikely that the alignment of these numbers, events, symbolic patterns is purely coincidental. The precision of the prophetic fulfillment, the mathematical harmony of the Jubilee cycles, and the reoccurrence of significant biblical numbers point to the fingerprints of the God of Israel in history. This intricate design demonstrates that the biblical timeline is not only divinely orchestrated, but also unfolds according to God's perfect will. The likelihood of these events aligning by mere chance is extremely low, suggesting that we are witnessing a part of God's greater plan for his people and mankind. The completion of these patterns in the Jubilee year 5536 in 2118 AD points to a future fulfillment of God's promises with historical patterns continuing to reveal his sovereign control over time. Solomon's Temple, a pivotal structure in Israel's history, began its construction in the fourth year of Solomon's reign as king over all of Israel. According to 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1, 
And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month of Ziph, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the Most High, which corresponds to the Jubilee year 2939. Based on this biblical timeline, the temple would have been completed in the 11th year of Solomon's reign, which falls at 2950 a.m. Significantly, 2950 a.m. is divisible by 50, marking it as the Jubilee celebratory year for the 59th Jubilee cycle of week years. The completion of the temple in the Jubilee year carries profound meaning as the Jubilee is a time of renewal, reliberation, and restoration, a perfect symbol for the completion of God's house where his presence would dwell among his people. Fast forward 2,600 years from 2950 and we arrive at the Jubilee year 5550. Remember those five numbers? 5.55 a.m which is equivalent to 2132 A.D. Both 5550 A.M. and 2132 A.D. represent the 111th Jubilee celebratory year, another significant marker in the divine timeline. Currently, I believe we are situated in the seventh year of the sixth week in the 109th Jubilee cycle which corresponds to the Jubilee year 5442 AM or 2023 AD. In this framework, 2024 marks the first year of the seventh week in the 109th Jubilee cycle, which is the Jubilee year 5443. Based on my analysis of the timeline, I have reason to believe that the time of the Gentiles, a period mentioned in biblical prophecy, will begin in the Jubilee year 5510. This year is positioned as the third year of the second week in the 111th Jubilee cycle, which is 3,051 years from the exodus of Israel from Egypt and 2,059 years from the first year of the Messiah's ministry. 5510 AM is equivalent to 2092 AD, a year I interpret as the beginning of the time of the Gentiles, According to the biblical prophecy, this period will culminate in a world that increasingly turns away from God and embraces the worship of the beast, as described in the book of Revelation. This period will likely witness a significant spiritual shift, marking the fulfillment of prophecies related to the end times. When we trace the timeline from Solomon's temple through the Jubilee cycles, and into the future prophetic periods, it becomes clear that these events are not coincidental, but divinely orchestrated. The Jubilee cycles provide a sacred structure of time, with major historical and prophetic events falling perfectly into place within God's timeline. The Jubilee year 5550 AM, 2132 AD, representing the 111th Jubilee celebratory year, points toward a significant future fulfillment, while 5510 AM, 2092 AD, marking the beginning of the time of the Gentiles, reveals a crucial turning point in world history. As we consider the completion of Solomon's Temple in the 59th Jubilee Cycle, and the prophetic markers leading us toward the 111th Jubilee Cycle, we witness the unmistakable fingerprints of the God of Israel. The patterns are too precise to be mere chance. They demonstrate a divine timeline in which every moment, whether it is the exodus, the construction of the temple, or the coming events foretold in prophecy, unfolds according to God's perfect will and design. These revelations compel us to prepare spiritually for the days ahead, knowing that history is moving toward the fulfillment of God's plan, where both restoration and judgment are promised according to his timeline and his word. As we approach 2092 AD, we should be aware of the signs and remain vigilant as the time of the Gentiles draw near, signaling the world's move toward the prophetic culmination foretold in scripture.
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. This bank content will end in 3, 2, 1.